the second book of the Chronicles, the second book of the Chronicles, chapter one, chapter one, the second book of the Chronicles, the second book of the Chronicles. Now Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. And Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges and to every leader in all Israel, the heads of the father's houses. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for the tabernacle of meeting with God was there, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But David had brought up the ark of God from Kirjath, Jerim, to the place David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Now the bronze altar that Bezalel, the son of Uriah, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. Solomon and the assembly sought him there. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. On that night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, You have shown great mercy to David my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, o Lord God, let your promise to David my father be established, for you have made me king of a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. So Solomon came to Jerusalem from the high place that was at Gibeon from before the tabernacle of meeting and reigned over Israel. Amen. David, the servant of God, created. Of course, God did through him the kingdom of Christ on earth, the beginning of it. But whatever starts has a continuation. What is important, my beloved brethren, is to have good continuation. Whatever God starts, the good work that God starts, He will finish it. That is the decision, the will, and the assurance of God through His Word to all of us. But that's not enough. The good work, God started with Saul, but there wasn't a good ending, and it finished. But the good work that God started with David, David worked according to the heart of God, according to the will of God, and David had a good continuation. And this continuation, now God will take in His own hands the continuation of David to lead it, to make it a reality in the best way, because David stood faithful until the end. And so many tried to become king after David, Absalom, Adonai, and others maybe, but God had appointed Solomon. And Solomon wasn't the mightiest to become king, on the contrary. And that's the amazing part. He was tender, gentle, the weakest to become king. But because God decided to do it, he prophesied it, he foresaid it, and he did it. And not only did Solomon become king, but as the Bible says, God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. And 
Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened. God was with him. Solomon was strengthened in the Lord, and God exalted him exceedingly. And someone might say, everything's going very, very well. But my beloved, Solomon, in his heart, he had, he nested, nice thoughts. Two thoughts, specific, important, astonishing. I will say them. Firstly, thanksgiving and glorification for the grace which God gave in his heart. And secondly, the first one very serious. The second one even more serious. Maybe what God made me and what God gave me and entrusted me with, I must do it in the best way. And so, even though he is exalted exceedingly by the Lord, Solomon gathers all the judges, his leaders, all who are in his kingdom, and they go to Gibeon, where the tabernacle of meeting was, in which God had made with his other servant Moses so to offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and praise. And God liked this. And a small parenthesis, never forget to glorify and thank God. And for the small and great things in your life. God is pleased. And he continues. If you stop thanking and praising God for his actions in your life, then God will stop. And this is very, very important and serious. Continue. And the more you continue, the more God will continue with you. But I've reached the end. God has exalted me. God's got more things to do with you. God has got more and more to do with you. With you, with your family, with our church. God's got more things to do. But in this certain condition, so God can continue, is for you to continue. For you to continue with glorification, thanksgiving, praising, and to have good thoughts and meditations in your heart. And we'll see what kind later on. When he reached the tabernacle of the Lord, he was before the bronze altar. And there he made an amazing offering, 1,000 burnt offerings, 1,000 animals. He burnt them all in the name of God. It was a sacrifice that God wanted. Because the unique sacrifice that replaced all the others hadn't taken place yet. The Lamb of God on the cross of Calvary. And once God was pleased, God was glorified. From Solomon's thanksgiving and praise, now it was God's turn to continue. At night he visits him. Solomon, my son. With great pleasure, how nice it is for us to be able to please God, for God to be pleased with our lives, how nice that is. With great pleasure, God says, Ask, what shall I give you? You have pleased me so much. What do you want me to give you? Now, the thoughts of Solomon are evolved, which he had in his heart, hidden, in which only God knew. He expresses gratitude for his father. I thank you God because you chose David when you rejected Saul. David wasn't worthy, but you chose him and made him king and you blessed him. But I thank you even more so because after David you chose me. I wasn't worthy. I wasn't the best, but you chose me. I thank you, God. Now I plead with you. Establish your word that you had promised my father David that you will bless him and his family and his kingdom. But especially, Lord, you made me king. Give me wisdom and knowledge. Not so I can reign but so I can serve your people. 
not so I can rule over, but so I can judge and do righteousness to your people. These are not my people. This is not my kingdom. I'm not a king, even though you did make me. I, myself, I see myself as a servant. I see myself as a slave. I want for you to give me ability, and this ability is wisdom and understanding, nothing else. I want ability, the ability so I can fulfill with the best way. What you have entrusted me with, without me changing in my soul, your will for your work. You did not appoint me to reign, but you appointed me to serve. You did not appoint me to rule over, but you appointed me so I can perform justice in your righteousness. You did not appoint me so I can be a leader upon the people because they're not my people. You appointed me to be a servant of your people. He doesn't feel that the people of God are his, his possession. He knows very, very well these people are not his, my beloved. This is wisdom. Even before the exceptional wisdom was given to him by God. This is not your family. God entrusted you with his family so you can serve this family, not to rule over your family, so you can perform justice and righteousness, not for you to reign over your family. These children are not yours. God has entrusted them to you. And God never stopped owning them. God entrusted you with children and grandchildren, not so you can rule over, command and lead them, but so you can serve them, offer to them, and to do justice by the Lord. This isn't your church. The brethren are not yours. They don't belong to you. What God has given you haven't stopped being His. But God entrusted you, your brother, your younger brother, the elder, the child, the elderly. God entrusted you with these people so you can serve them. And for you to bring to them your righteousness through the word of God. God hasn't given you and Solomon knows this well. God hasn't given him possession rights nowhere, nor in the land of Israel, because it's an inheritance of the people of Israel, nor in the people of Israel, because they belong to God, and the land belongs to God, and these people belong to God, nor in his family, nor in his children, because he knows very, very well, Solomon, that he's just for a little while here. He's just passing by just to offer his services. He's just for a little while to work and serve the will of God. And he knows something else, my beloved brethren, Solomon, which is amazing that he, on his own, if he hasn't got wisdom and understanding by God, he will fail. He will fail in everything he does. He will create ruins. He knows very, very well that the wisdom of man is earthly, demonic, sensual. So, no good results. No good results at all. He knows this very, very well. But he's strengthened, God did it. But he's exalted, God did it. But now I need from God things so I can do something. And this is a message today. And it is truly from heaven. If you want to do something in your life, ask for wisdom and understanding by God. There's no other way. 
If you want to succeed and to make something a reality in your life, small, great, dedicate your life. Humble yourself before God. Confess before God that you are weak, unable, a vile servant. You can't do a thing if God doesn't give you from His own wisdom which comes from above, it's eternal, heavenly. And, my beloved, in these thoughts, in this human spirit and logic, God was pleased even more so. And when God is pleased, that's why I say, let's ask for have to have God's favour in our lives. When God is pleased, He does great things. He said, Solomon, how you made me happy. How different you are from all the other Israelites, Solomon. How different you are from all the other people. How different you are from your officers, your leaders, from all the others. How different you are in your humility and your acknowledgement of the truth, in the acknowledgement of your weakness, in the acknowledgement of your anxiety, so you can fulfill the will of God. How different you are from all the other people. That's why I will make you even more different. I will make you blessed. How happy I am, Solomon, that you do not ask from me. Riches, wealth, honor, as all the others would have asked from me. Riches, wealth, honor. How happy that I am that you did not ask from me the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life for yourself. How happy that you asked from me wisdom and knowledge so you can serve, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. My people over whom I have made you king. How happy that you acknowledge that you are not a king, but that you are serving as a king. That you are just for a little while to do a little job for me, a very little job, a very restricted job to bring up, for example, your child for 20 years. For 15 years, a very little job. To bring to heaven your family, a very small job. To serve your brethren, a very small job. How happy I am that you understand this. And at the same time, you acknowledge that you haven't got the ability to do it. And you are asking help from me in this specific will in this specific work, in this specific matter in which I have called you and I have predestined for you to serve it and work at it. How happy I am for you. And when God is happy, my brethren, He expresses His joy gloriously. And that's why I, firstly, I will give you what you did not ask from me. Or, all that you did not ask from me, I will give it to you. And so much so, that none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. You will be one of a kind, nor had or will have after you. My beloved, you know what it is for God to characterize you as someone unique, and then think that this is strange or exaggerated. Each one of us is unique in a work in which God has entrusted him with. Unique. No one else can do it. Your children, no other person can bring them up. They're your children. It's finished. That's your job. An elder in this church, no one else can be. God appointed you. Deacon, the same thing. No one else can become a deacon in this church. God appointed you. How sad God is when 
You have the name that you're a king, but you're dead. You do according to your own heart. How sad and God is when you're an elder and you do according to your own heart. How sad and God is when you are a father and you do according to your own heart. How sad and God is when you have taken a responsibility upon yourself. A small responsibility for a little while. Responsible for writing CDs. A small job. I mop every Thursdays. A small thing. I visit the sick every Saturday. A small job. But all these small things, when God blesses them, they have great big results. Jake Habel did a small thing when she took her child, hid it and kept it for a few days. But Moses came from there. Moses! Because she said, I will not kill him. She kept it and kept it until she could. A few days. And then she said, I'm going to leave it in the River Nile. By faith, she protected it. And God blessed that baby. Sometimes, things are even more difficult. What a nice decision the three lads took to go to the king and say that we don't care about your command. Throw us in the fiery furnace. And how much God blessed them. How much God blessed Daniel in his old age. When they told him to stop praying. Stop for a month, brother. Close the doors and windows just for a month. No, he said. I'm old now. Now, I will stop praying. What I did all my life. He opened those windows. He opened that door. And he praised God. I'll throw you in the lion's den. So, throw me. But how much God blessed Daniel. How serious it is, my brother, for you to do the will of God and for God to bless you. And how ugly it is for you to do what you want to do and to fail in the end. How ugly it is. God gave you something and trusted you with something. Why? Why? Ask for wisdom and understanding by God when He give it to you. When He give it to you. Ask help from God. Won't you have it? My beloved, today I believe that God wants to lead us to seeking, to seek His will for us to do it in a way that's perfect. No matter what way this might be, in a way that's perfect. In other words, that's why I'm telling you that today I like the message from heaven. God wants to make you unique in your work. Unique in your job. For you to be. No one to be better than you before. And no one to be better than you afterwards. Not so you can satisfy your ego. But because the work in which God has entrusted you with is unique. And no one else can do it. No one else can do it. Do it, brother. And ask, all that's necessary by God, characteristics and weapons, which God will use, so your work can truly be unique. Unique before men, unique before God, unique in heaven. Unique was the work of Paul. No one better than him before or after, but the same unique was Peter's work. Unique was the work of the eunuch. No one before or after preached in the same way the gospel in Ethiopia. Unique was the work of Philip. No one before or afterward preached the gospel in Samaria in that way. Unique. The work of Phoebe. He served and helped the brethren.
with all people, with each one of us, God has a unique work. And He wants this work for us to do it perfectly. With the help of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And before I finish my brethren, no one can work, for example, in your family. Only you can. Ask for wisdom and understanding by God and you'll see what God will do. But with acknowledgement that your family doesn't belong to you, it's God's. With acknowledgement that your wisdom is the least, you need God's wisdom. Forgive me, let me say it one more time. Beloved brother, beloved sister, the work that God has given you to do it is unique. Ask help from God for it to be done perfectly. Amen.